Hello there. Well, today we're going to see what Wireshark is. We're going to see uh, who can use Wireshark, where to download it from. We're going to take a look at an example. I'm going to show you a simple example when you're facing a problem, how to troubleshoot it. I'm going to show you the Wireshark capture that I took um, some time back, uh, I guess a few months back. I just got hold of it. So I was like, okay, let's do it on that. So anyways, let's, let's proceed. Okay. So Wireshark is a network packet analyzer. What do we mean by that? Well, we're able to capture packets using Wireshark, okay? And then Wireshark is able to present those packets to you in a lot of detail, right? As much detail as possible. Now, Wireshark is available for free. Initially, when you had tools like Wireshark, which were used to capture packets, they were not free, they were costly. With the Wireshark, it's free, it's open source. And there's a developer's uh, user guide available as well that you can um, download or uh, access from the internet, from Google. I'm gonna possibly put a link in the description for that. And uh, without a shadow of doubt, it's one of the best packet analyzers out there. So I really love Wireshark. It's one of the great, uh, great, uh, greatest tools out there when you're troubleshooting any network problem and stuff like that. I'm going to show you uh, more examples and uh, a lot of details moving forward. Okay, let's take a look at a quick example here. Let's say Asan is trying to talk to Shaw and they're communicating just fine. Suddenly, Asan goes to the network admin and says there's a problem. Well, there is a problem. That's why Asan went to the network admin, right? So the network admin is like, okay, in this case, we're talking about Wireshark, right? So the, let's, let's say the admin tried different things and he didn't understand a thing. Now he wants more detailed uh, analysis. He wants to capture the packets. So where does he capture the packets on this wire? Well, he does not capture the packets here somewhere in the middle of the file, in the middle of the wire, right? He either takes the capture here or here on the network interfaces right okay let's say in this case he takes a capture here um on this computer's network interface and then um, the admin is going to ask for example asan to go ahead and ping sha okay so as soon as he starts um he, he opens up the command prompt and goes ahead and tries to ping sha right if the if the admin is able to see the packets here, he goes ahead and checks, hey, do we see any echo replies as well sent from this or not? And proceed with the troubleshooting accordingly. But this is how and where you would actually uh, take a Wireshark capture. Well, not how, I'm gonna show you how, but this is where you take the packet captures and not here in the middle, of, right? Somewhere in the middle of the wire, you cannot break the wire and take the capture there. Right, you take it on the interfaces, the 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 endpoints, the network interfaces. Right, so I hope that was clear. Let's proceed and see who should use, who can use Wireshark to be more specific. Let's check it out. All right, I just made it simple, and uh, these are the people who use uh, Wireshark. Uh, network administrators uh, use it for troubleshooting the network problems. The security, the network security uh, engineers. Uh, use it for examining the security problems. The QA engineers for to verify network applications. The developers use it to debug protocol implementations. And then you got people use it to learn network protocol internals. What do I mean by that, actually? Um, so it, as I said before, that it does not just capture a packet. So let's say there's an OSPF packet that was captured. But it's not going to say just, oh, we got an OSPF packet on this wire. And that's it. No, it's going to give you a lot of details about the internals of OSPF in that case. And therefore, a lot of people actually use Wireshark to go ahead and understand the protocol internals using Wireshark. Right? I'm going to show you that as well, um, hopefully after this. I also actually wanted to add one more point uh, to uh, the slide I showed you before, uh, which is actually this. So this is the slide we were checking before, right? Let's say there's a switch in the middle right here, okay? There's a switch right here. And in this case, where would you take the captures? So just to show you, because in real life, we don't have computers directly connected to computers, right? So you can take a Wireshark capture here, 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 or here, depending on whatever the problem is, right? So you can take it on these interfaces rather than anywhere else. So yeah, just wanted to quickly tell you this. 
So let's proceed and uh, let me just show you how to download and where to download Wireshark from. Okay, I'm at Google right now. And let's say I want to download Wireshark. How do I do it? I just type download Wireshark. Okay. And as soon as, uh, as soon as I do that, the very first link that you get, which is this, you can just click on that, this download Wireshark and just download Wireshark for your Windows PC from there. I clicked on it and uh, this is um, the first one, the first option. Uh, well, usually we have X64, so that's why. Uh, you just click on that and it'll download it, and um, it's a 75 it's 75.1 uh, megabytes, and it's uh, the version is 402. Now you can also download Wireshark uh, by just click on that Wireshark.org/download/slash. Okay, once you are here, you can go directly to Win64 if you want to do it for Win64. Well, we don't have. Well, people don't usually use Win32. I, I don't know when was the last time I, I saw Win32. So yeah, Win34, Win64, sorry. Just click on Win64 folder. And once you're here, as I showed you before, that uh, this is the one, the 402 version of Wireshark that we are interested in. As soon as you click on it, it's gonna download Wireshark. And again, it's 75.1 megabytes in size. And yeah, once it's downloaded, just install it, next, next, next. And uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, just, just go with the flow and uh, that's it. If you have any questions, yeah, put it down in the comments section. I already downloaded it. I guess you might get confused with one PCAP, but anyways, I don't really have in the back of my head right now um, what that looks like or what is the option, what is the option that we get there. But anyways, it's it's really not that complicated. Just do a next, 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 and go with whatever the options are, okay? Let's take a look at uh, the capture that I was talking about before. All right, so this is the packet capture I was talking about, and I'm gonna show you all the details of this interface. What are these parts? What is this area and that area and whatnot? But before that, let me tell you how to start packet capture to begin with, right? So you just go to the start menu and type Wireshark. You'll see Wireshark pop up. And what you see Wireshark as, it will look exactly like this, right? So what you need to do now is select one of the interfaces from here. So as I can see, I see traffic on these two interfaces right here, right? So I'm gonna go with Wi-Fi in my case. Uh, I'm not going to go for the second one. I'm, I'm, um, you know, I'm connected via the Wi-Fi. So if I just click on that, and uh, that's it, it's going to start the capture on that, um, you know, Wi-Fi interface. So let me just show you. I'll just select that one, double click on Wi-Fi, and that's it. I just double clicked on Wi-Fi, okay? And it started, uh, you know, capturing the packets, right? So I didn't like it. Let's say I didn't like it. So I can just go to this part right here. I can go to capture and stop and basically say, hey, I don't wanna capture everything that I see in there, right? I can go to options here. I can select Wi-Fi again, but I can say, hey, I don't wanna capture everything. I wanna capture only one of these things. So whenever you're starting a capture and you don't want all that noise in there because whatever information is extra is noise, right? You don't want you don't want all that. You just want you to be uh, packets to be um, you know, captured when you're running the capture on this interface called Wi-Fi. So I click on start, I say continue without saving. So it's just telling me, hey, do you wanna save the previous capture that was running that you just stopped? I don't wanna save that. Continue without saving and whatever UDP uh, kind of packets pop up, they're gonna be captured. And that's pretty much it. That's one of the basic and easiest way to start your captures having a filter um, at the same time. Okay, now let's jump back to uh, the capture I have taken before and let me show you what every interface means and yeah, let's see. Okay, now let's take a look at these options one by one. Okay, so the very first row that you see at the top is the menu. This is the menu bar in which you see file, edit, view, go, capture. And I showed you how you can use capture, right? I showed you some of the examples. So there are a ton of options available under all of these option in, options in the menu bar, right? And then you have the second row right here, which is your main toolbar. This is nothing but a quick access. For example, you want to reload 
this capture file, just click on this button. If you want to close it, click on this one. If you want to save it, click on this. It's already saved, so it's grayed out. Um, it's not running. Otherwise, you can just use this option right here to stop it. If you want to start capture, you can click on that and so on. There are a ton of options there. Uh, you can just you know check them out one by one, pretty self-explanatory. And uh, if you check out this option now, the very next option after that is the apply a display filter. Now you see there are a ton of uh, packets out here, right, in this area. You don't want to see all of that. As I said, it's noise if it's not if you're not concerned with it. So how do you filter these packets out? Uh, let's say I want to check only HTTP. I, I, I just type that out, hit enter, and that's it. I see only HTTP packets now, right? Now, these are all related to HTTP. These are HTTP packets. Now, if I want to see the contents of these packets, let's say packet. So also another thing that we got the packet numbers given right here. So the packet numbers are given here. And let's say I want to know more about a certain packet. As I said, that Wireshark gives you not just what packet, but it also gives you the contents of the packet as well. So let's say 106, packet number 106. I just click on that. And I can see all the information here. So what's really going on and all this information, HTTP, JavaScript, what was the, the response from the other end and so on. This is where you find all that information. We're going to talk about these parts a lot in the upcoming videos. But uh, right now, just to tell you that uh, this is how it is. Now, this area, this, this part, which is this one right here. This is known as the packet timeline. Okay, you can just write these things down if you want to. So this is the packet timeline, P-A-C short, and the timeline. That's pretty much it. Now, when you select a packet, as I showed you before, like let's say I select packet 106, and you see the details down here in this section, right? Now, what is this? This is your selected packet contents, right? The contents of your packet is shown in this particular area. And what else do we have? We have the total number of packets right here, the total packets in your file, and how many are displayed that is shown right here. So we got six packets displayed in this area, and that information is given down here as well, right? And then we have this part, what is this? I don't usually use it. 99% of the times I don't use it. There, there would be hardly any time that I've used this one. Uh, I guess once maybe, but anyways. So this is nothing but the hex content of the selected packet. So you selected packet number 106, and this is the hex content of this packet. And yes, as I said, you can usually um, ignore it, as I do it almost all the times, right? So this is what we have about the interface, the contents of the packet, the hex of that packet, the packet timeline, and the packet numbers are right here. You can add or remove columns, as you can see columns right here, number, time, source, destination, destination port, time to live, delta. Uh, I've added delta host server, uh, myself, you might not see them. I'm going to show you in upcoming videos how to add them. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And just to show you one more thing before we go, and that is this option under view, if I didn't show it to you, I guess I didn't show it to you. So if you go under view, you can actually go ahead and um, basically remove the main toolbar from being displayed as you can see it's gone right you go to view and you get it back and in the view itself because as i said this this field right here the bytes field this is something i don't really i'm not concerned with usually so i can just remove it from there uh by unchecking this part the packet bytes that's it i click on that and it's gone because i don't need it usually and this is all i'm concerned with at the moment right so as, as, a, as a small example if i click on this packet i want to see more about this packet i go to the http part i expand it i see oh it's a get request and this is the resource 
let me just expand this one and let me just expand authorization as well and now explain it to you so from this packet we understand oh this is the resource that we're trying to sorry this is the resource that we're trying to um, fetch information about and what are we trying to fetch we're trying to fetch the system time right this is the exact resource that we want to fetch and the request method is actually get we can have post delete put and all of that right we're using http which is not secure which is not good i'll tell you why it's not good right when you go to this part the authorization right you see the username and the password right here which is bad right and then you have the cookie right here so you can get all this information using wireshark and it's extremely good because let's say you didn't you, you, the 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 for example the method used is incorrect you don't want to use http and that's why it's getting rejected and all of that information you can find detailed information in wireshark and it's an extremely important tool to learn for any network administrator and all the other people that uh, i showed in you in one of the previous slides right so thank you so much if you're new to the channel you know what to do help me hack the youtube algorithm by liking put a comment as well and subscribe share and yeah that's pretty much it lovely talking to you you have a great day and goodbye